Hey everyone, on today's episode of Nile Gardens, it's time for a May vegetable garden tour because so much is growing. I've got loads that I want to show you and big change is happening and I can't wait to show you that either. Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back. And welcome back to the vegetable garden in May. And if you've been following me over either the last year or even more, you'll see just how different this place looks now. It's so much more lush. Everything is full and green. And I suppose burgeoning, things are growing and it really feels like this might be the year for the veg garden. So what I'm really excited to do today is show you exactly what I've got growing, things I've got started, things that are in the middle of their growth, things that I'm harvesting, and some really, really large stuff that I'm changing that's going to be a big job. I'll show it all. And actually, I don't know why we're walking that way. We always start at this end of the veg garden. So instead, let's go this way and start at the back end of the veg garden. Oh yeah, and while I'm at it, you know the way I always talk about how I love to share my garden with you? If you've got a question, write it in the comments down below as I'm going through this tour, or if you've got a suggestion, or even just you want to make a comment and tell me about something you love. So, kicking off with this bed, and the one just off camera. These are actually the newest beds in the veg garden, and that's because originally they didn't exist. For the last couple of years, this was just an open area of grass, and I really wanted something down here, and I realized that I had exactly enough leftover wood to make two more beds. So of course, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make more beds. And each of these, rather than being filled with topsoil, because I didn't have any left, are filled with garden scraps, hedge trimmings, compost, leaf mold, a little bit of everything. I wish I could say it was like Hugel culture, but it's more like Cheetle culture. <laughs> and we'll see how they get on. The nutrient levels may not be great, but they have been topped up with compost and manure, so hopefully they're going to be fine. And in here I have all of this year's sweet peas. And that's because in year one I grew sweet peas on canes, like uh, tea peas, in the middle, and I found that they just weren't strong enough in the winds. Last year I grew them up and over the arches that I have in the veg garden, and again I just didn't really like how they looked, so this year I have a dedicated bed just to sweet pea. And I'm growing them up these, which are offcuts from the apple trees. We'll see how well they get on. They are starting to climb, they are looking good, and I'm really hopeful. And what's going to be nice is this, well, unless I grow things in between, which I probably will need to because you can see how, well, bare the soil is, this is pretty much just going to be for picking flowers, and I can't wait. Now, next bed. And right next to the sweet peas, brassicas, and I've got them planted quite tightly, and that's because I really want to get quite an intensive use out of this bed. All of these plants are bought baby plants. They got planted maybe about six weeks, eight weeks ago, and I have absolutely no guilt in saying that that is what I do. And that's because when it comes to brassicas, I'm not brilliant at getting them from seedling stage to nice small baby plant stage. Once they're that and they're planted, they're fine. <laughs> Getting them to germinate is fine, it's the bit in between. So what I've done is I've gone out and got some baby plants as well, and I'd encourage you to do the same because I think there is a thing, uh, particularly with Grow Your Own, that it's not worthy unless you've grown it from seed. That is not true, and ultimately what you're helping to do is support potentially local industry, garden centres and growers. So what I have is I have a small block of summer cabbages, I have a small block of calabrese or broccoli as I would know it, and at the end I've got something new to me, which are turnips. I've never really grown turnips, I've never really bothered, but truthfully I saw them and I thought I'm going to give them a go. These are all looking really good, just got to keep them watered, keep them weeded, but they're all nicely netted in my netting from Gardening Naturally, and we just got to wait for them to do their thing. So let's have a look at the next two beds behind me. 
I am so happy with these two beds. And they don't have anything massively special in them, but they are making me extremely happy. These this year are my Allium beds, and I'm growing an awful lot of Alliums. This whole bed in front of me is just red onions. I went a little bit wild. I planted more sets than I needed to, and then couldn't resist just planting them all. There's probably about 50. So if you know someone that likes red onions, let me know. I'll send them. <laughs> And then here, I've got a mix of three different things. I've got a regular white onion. Behind it then, I've got garlic. And behind it, I've got shallots. And one of the reasons I'm so excited about it is in the past, I've grown a few onions and I've had sort of hit or miss results. Then last year, I had success. And this year, things are looking so good. The onions already are looking so fat and strong. The garlic is just starting to yellow on the edges, which is good. It's what I'd expect because I'm going to want to harvest it in the early, early summer, I suppose. And behind it, the shallots are just massive. Just look at how lovely everything is. It's so lush, all the plants are so strong. The onions, the garlic, the shallots. But you may notice that they also look quite densely packed with grain. That's because in my first year, these were potato beds. And no matter what I have done in the following years, there is always potato plants coming up. So I think I would have to advise that unless you really don't mind getting adventurous potatoes growing, or you're going to use the beds again and again for potatoes, really keep your potatoes to containers, because this is actually surprisingly annoying, and I'm going to have to go through and clear all of this out. However, I cannot wait to get some of the harvests. Now, onwards. You may or may not be pleased to know that not all at Nile Gardens HQ is perfection. And this bed and the bed behind me is a prime example of things not being perfect. I've been experimenting in this bed with trying to grow almost like square foot gardening, but growing all sorts of different things. Some things have been really successful. I've got nice little baby lettuces that are coming on well. Other things simply haven't performed. My rocket has immediately bolted, as has my turnips. My turnips always bolt. Um, so yeah, that's a bit disappointing, but I do have some nice little radishes started. I've got pak choy, and although it has bolted, the rocket is still mm, quite tasty, a little bit better. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do this to this bed. Maybe let's just not keep talking about it. But as well as that, oh, right, honesty time. Let's talk about broad beans, because my broad bean bed behind me has been an absolute unmitigated disaster this year. Last year, I had so many broad beans that we still have them in the freezer. This year, however, the first crop got wiped out in the really cold temperatures before Christmas. Then I planted more. And back in my March vegetable garden tour video, you can see quite how desolate it is. Well, it's still pretty much that desolate. And I think for this year, gonna pretty much give up, work with what I've got, get the harvests off that and interplant it with other stuff. It's not all perfect. Now from really not particularly successful beds to four really successful beds and really to say that they make my heart sing wouldn't be an exaggeration. These have come together so nicely. These four L-shaped beds in the very center of the vegetable garden that I keep talking about wanting to make the heart of the garden. These are my fruit tree guilds and they are just performing so nicely. And that's because I love both ornamentals and edibles. And that is exactly what these beds give. They're a permaculture principle. If you haven't seen it already, I've made the first of a four part series all about how to create fruit tree guilds in your own garden. Just look at them. Each one has a lovely small apple tree in it. They've got things like comfrey, lupins, fennel, calendula. These calendula are just about to open. There's herbs, there's alliums, there's a little bit of absolutely everything. There's rhubarb, I've got cornflowers, you name it, it's here. And it's this kind of wild, 
slightly crazy mixture of everything, but they are all carefully chosen. And soon I'm gonna be publishing the next video, which is how to choose your planting for your own fruit tree guild. This is really coming together. I know I sound a little bit overexcited, but I am just so pleased. And I can just imagine in a month or two, sitting right here, enjoying all of the food and the flowers. So we're pretty much halfway now. There's another couple of beds I wanna show you up at the top of the veg garden. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna take a seat for a minute and talk to you about this bed and there's a matching one on the other side. And these are a real luxury when it comes to veg beds because they're dedicated to a perennial veg that doesn't really crop that much, but I adore and it's asparagus. If you haven't seen asparagus when it's growing beyond the, the spears that you see in the veg garden, check it out. It creates these really tall spears that will ultimately open into really ferny foliage and they're not gonna stop at this. They're gonna grow like five, six foot tall. What I'm really happy about is that these are nice, strong plants. This is year two, and really when you plant asparagus crowns or when you grow them from seed, you don't harvest them for the first three years because you want them to establish. And I have been really good and not harvested a single spear. Honestly, I have not cut a single one. These are doing well, but I've really changed the beds. In my March video, I think these were just horrible weedy messes. I've cleared them out, mulched them and I've planted them with something that is more appropriate than what I previously had because in this one there were blackberries and in the next one there were raspberries and they were rampant and they took over and it didn't work and it was a mess and I felt really bad about it. So instead what they're now interplanted with are strawberries and strawberries are a really good thing to interplant in amongst asparagus because they're going to help really mulch the soil and keep down weeds but at the same time they're shallow rooted and they're not going to compete the asparagus which can actually get quite easily outcompeted and in the middle there are some courgettes and so far they've evaded slug damage and I think I'm gonna get a crop yes but let's have a look behind me at the bed behind da, 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 da. okay and the next bed is my purple sprouting broccoli. And back in March, I was bemoaning the fact that I didn't have any early purple sprouting broccoli because my plants were just regular purple sprouting broccoli, but now they have taken off and I'm getting loads of lovely crops. In fact, they've taken off to the extent now that my netting is a little bit too small. So I think I'm gonna to have to take the hit, lift the netting off and let them grow a bit. But now I've got six plants of really just lovely, tasty, tender purple sprouting broccoli. And what I'm really wanting to do is keep this bed moving over. So in amongst it, I've planted calettes. They're like uh, Brussels sprouts, except the Brussels sprouts themselves, rather than being little, really tough, round balls of things. Instead, they're like little mini cabbages, little purple cabbages. Can't wait to get those going. So this, this is working really nicely. And last but not least, on this side, I have my pea bed. I have two rows of meteor, a really early dwarf pea, and behind them, two rows of kelved and wonder. And I can't wait to get a harvest because certainly the meteor is now flowering. And again, I use offcuts from the apple trees as twiggy pea sticks. There's actually just something really nice about using those. And the funny thing is that not only do they work nicely, but because they're fresh, they're actually coming into blossom, which looks really nice. I can't wait to get a harvest. But now that we've covered all the beds, that's everything that's growing here. And you can see that loads is happening, a lot more than I've managed to achieve in previous years. And that feels just, well, it feels really good and it feels really positive. But let's talk about the elephant in the room because I'm fairly certain that as you've been watching this video, you've seen a lot less grass and a lot more landscape fabric and the start of gravel. And that's because I've talked for so long about coming up with a solution for what I was gonna put in between the beds. I've talked about how I hate grass paths. Well, I've finally done it. I've taken the plunge, I'm covering it up and I'm covering it with a really lovely gravel. And that's what all of these bags are. You can't see all of these, 
but there's actually seven big ton bags of gravel. I'm gonna make a video in more detail about me actually doing that, but this gravel has really very kindly been supplied to me by a local business, a local business called Landscaping Solutions. I've used them ever since I moved here for all sorts of different garden projects. They provide things like gravel, aggregates, paving, all of that really high quality landscaping stuff. And when I reached out to them and asked them, could they help me? They said yes. And they're providing me with this. This at the moment looks really white because it's gonna just need to get wet over time and get cleaned. But this is a really lovely golden sandstone. And the plan is that the whole veg garden is going to be graveled. It's gonna be so much more practical and I can't wait to get it started. So much so that I had to put a little bit down just to have a look. <laughs> and I'm aware that it looks really messy now on camera, but you can see the difference. It's gonna be so bright, it's gonna be so crisp and clean, and it's gonna be a really practical surface for me to use. So stay tuned because I'm gonna give you some proper updates and make a really proper video about graveling this whole place. If you need some hard landscaping materials, things like this kind of gravel, do make sure to check out Landscaping Solutions. They're on Instagram, they've got a website, and I really do think that they're probably one of the best companies around for this kind of thing. So I'll make sure to leave a link in the description down below to all of their socials and their website so you can check them out for yourself. I know there really is quite a lot of things going on at the moment between getting rid of grass and adding down landscape fabric and gravel and there's things going in and there's things getting changed, but hopefully you agree that everything is starting to come together. Like just, I find when I look down this way, it really does feel like things are starting to come together. So that's my veg garden in May. I hope you've really enjoyed seeing around it, seeing everything that's happening. And as ever, if you've got a comment or you wanna share something with me, or you've got a question, leave a comment down below. I really do love hearing from you. And until next time, see you later.